What's happening hardscapers today? We're talking about woven and non-woven geotextile. When and where you should use them, their applications, and why you need to be incorporating them in your base. Geotextiles are a crucial part of hardscape projects to separate, reinforce, and allow for drainage and filtration. Though not every type of fabric is suitable for every application in a hardscape project and there are several variables that need to be considered when deciding on what fabric needs to be used. Woven and non-woven geotextiles have their strengths and weaknesses when it comes to any installation. Where one excels, the other may not perform in the same way. This is based on their properties and what they offer for an application. In this video, we're going to highlight their similarities and differences and where they may be used in a typical hardscape installation. These two geotextiles provide separation, reinforcement, filtration, and or drainage. This is specifically important where subgrade materials remain saturated for a portion of the year or there are multiple freeze-thaw cycles in the winter. The separation of the subgrade material from the base material is important to prevent migration of the soil subgrade into the base material. This upwards migration of the soil subgrade into the base material is caused by the load that the pavement bears. Think about when you step your boot into some mud, your boot is the load pushing down on the mud causing it to shift horizontally and upwards. The reinforcement or stabilization of your base material when using geotextile helps to spread the load out over a greater area because of the geotextile being in tension and providing tensile strength to your base material. The filtration of geotextiles allows for the removal of material to prevent contamination of base or backfill material. Drainage allows the water to freely flow through the geotextile. When choosing the right geotextile for your project, there are a few factors that we need to consider. Before we get into those factors, we need to learn more about the two major types of geotextiles and what their properties are. The first one is woven geotextile fabric. It's made of polypropylene filaments connected to a network that provide more stabilization strength than the non-woven geotextile. This geotextile is going to provide separation, filtration, and reinforcement enforcement strength when installed. However, it performs poorly with drainage. Woven geotextile will be used in heavier dynamic and static load projects such as driveways to add additional reinforcement to the base by spreading the load out over a greater area. Where the subsoil is soft and unstable or water is less likely to permeate through a subgrade, woven geotextile is likely what you will opt for as drainage into the subgrade is not as important. However, this does not mean that drainage is not important for that particular project. Drainage is always important and since we are not getting the proper drainage that we need when deciding to opt for a woven geotextile, we need to install a drainage system for that project using a perforated or solid pipes and drains to collect the water and exfiltrate it out of the system. Otherwise, you're creating a reservoir for that water to stand and cause issues over time. The second type is non-woven geotextile fabric. It is made of polypropylene fibers that are randomly connected through a network. These fibers are small components of the network creating a felt-like feel to it. This geotextile is going to provide separation, filtration, and drainage when installed, but not very much reinforcement. This type of fabric can be installed in hardscape installation projects under interlock and retaining wall projects, in addition to other landscape drainage projects like French drains. The main difference between woven geotextile and non-woven geotextile is the drainage and reinforcement properties to them. Non-woven geotextile is a water permeable landscape fabric, with drainage being the aspect in which non-woven geotextile fabrics excel when compared to woven geotextiles. This becomes a primary focus for areas of projects that require that drainage ability or already have that reinforcement property to them, such as a concrete overlay or a synthetic base. It also means projects that experience pedestrian traffic, low dynamic loads, low static loads, hard subgrades, and require the ability to drain freely, then non-woven geotextile fabric is the best option. This is key in projects that require the separation of material from cross-contamination while possessing the ability to allow water to drain freely through it, such as a French drain. In this application, a perforated drainage pipe is surrounded by a clean stone and wrapped all the way around with a non-woven geotextile filter fabric. The water from the surface can permeate through the non-woven geotextile, through the clean stone, and into the drainage pipe. This ensures the filtration of water through the fabric without displacing any of the material around it, and the same can be said in hardscape projects that require the same function. 
Another hardscape application that is specific to non-woven geotextile would be a concrete overlay. We know that the base of our concrete overlay is a hard material that does not require stabilization or reinforcement. What we require is for any water that enters the system to drain through and filter out of the system. This is why a non-woven geotextile is always recommended in this application. Additionally, non-woven geotextile is used in a synthetic base preparation where we use paver base panels because these panels provide the reinforcement or stabilization of the base and therefore what we really require is drainage properties in our geotextile being installed. That is why manufacturers have this specified in their installation that these paver base panels need to be installed with a non-woven geotextile fabric. Additionally a non-woven geotextile is typically a retaining wall fabric however a woven geotextile can be used for the foundation base of the retaining wall. The remainder of the wall can be covered with a non-woven geotextile as the main properties for the lateral and top portion of the fabric is separation, filtration, and drainage, not reinforcement. This allows water to penetrate through the backfilled portion of the wall and into the drain without displacing the subgrade and soil material into the backfill material. If you want to install a non-woven landscape fabric but still have that reinforcement and stabilization property to it, you can install it with GeoGrid in combination. In this application, the non-woven geotextile is installed first, providing the separation, filtration, and drainage to the project with the GeoGrid immediately installed on top of this, providing that reinforcement and stabilization. Because the non-woven geotextile is more flexible than the woven geotextile, the aggregate is still able to strike through the apertures of the geogrid and function properly. You're going to notice with this material, when I add water to it on the top, it's going to drain freely through on the other side with no water remaining on the surface of this. That water goes right through this material. On the other hand, with this woven geotextile, Compared to the non-woven, let's see what happens when we add some water to it. I'm going to make a little bowl here, add our water. And currently we're getting nothing coming through the other side. So there's already some water in there. I've poured my water in and there's nothing. Now, if I use my hand and I just touch the bottom, you're going to see some water coming out. That's because this woven geotextile needs to have contact on the bottom of it for that water to flow through. Water will still flow through, but at a much slower rate than the non-woven geotextile. And you can see it's still coming out because there are creases that I'm creating in this woven material that's allowing that water to go out when it's not completely flat. So now that it's completely flat, that water for the most part staying on the surface and that's why this is a great material not for drainage but for separation, for filtration and for providing some stability to your base material. Now when installing a geotextile the minimum overlap from one piece to another is 12 inches with this increasing as the softer the subgrade is. In addition to this the pieces should be shingled away from a foundation and this means that the pieces closest to the foundation should be on top of those away from the foundation allowing the water to travel from piece to piece away from the foundation without moving underneath a piece of fabric. As the geotextile is rolled out and cut the pieces need to be in tension as the base material is being prepared on top of it. This means that all of the wrinkles need to be removed before dumping gravel on top and preparing your base. It is best to limit the amount of cutting of the fabric. It is also important when installing a fabric for your project that it will wrap up the sides of the project to provide further separation of the subgrade from the sides into the base material. The separation of the subgrade under tension of the geotextile prevents the upward movement of the subgrade into our base material by spreading the load out over a larger area. It also prevents the horizontal movement of that same subgrade from the sides of our excavation into our base material. There are numerous benefits to installing geotextiles in your hardscape projects. There are factors that need to be considered when choosing the right geotextile for your application, as well as further investigation into these types of geotextiles, but this is a great starting point for knowing more about non-woven and woven geotextile fabrics. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below, like this video, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more hardscape topics.